Okay, we seem to be live, and it looks like we're having some issues getting others connected. Um, I sent out a tweet uh, notifying that we are live and uh, being broadcast and hopefully generating a recording that will later upload to YouTube. But what I did notice was that when I tried to create the event uh, within the Google Plus community, I was given less options. I wasn't able to broadcast live, so instead I just generated or initiated a Hangout as I normally would, inviting uh, just the, the Till Thursday community. But uh, it doesn't seem like it is working, so let's wait a few minutes and see if we can get others connected. So let's try something else. So I'm going to end this and try something else. I'm going to close this. And go to the community. Go to events. And I'm going to join Hangout. Okay, I see Rob. Hello, Rob. Can you hear Good morning. me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, I'm trying to get Kirsten also. She seems uh, to be in another Hangout, and she says she's the only one in the Hangout, so uh, I'm not sure exactly mm. why that is. So we'll wait just a few more minutes and see if I can get her going. Um, I actually have to go for my cell phone this time. You know, I was, I was yesterday. Yesterday, I was bragging about uh, Foxfly, right? And I've been using it for six months. So last night, or I'm, I'm, you know, I get up early and I'm looking at my cell phone and. Oh, all of a sudden, it like turns off, and they they updated the the uh, um, you know, they did the auto update update uh, on the Android operating system, and went from like 4.0 to 4.1. Well, it messes up everything because that Foxfly only works with Android 4.0, not with 4.1, and. Uh, yeah, so now I'm, you know, I have to, of course, there's nobody to call, and, and uh, I'm not, you know, I've always suspected, I've actually kept, a, and I'm trying to get my, my old uh, DSL network, I, I, I was going to disconnect it, and I said, you know what, Verizon's probably going to figure out that, uh, you know, more than a million people are on this Foxfly and doing what I'm doing, and they're, Losing out on uh, third, you know, for me it'd be five hundred dollars a month in use, and, or something like that. And uh, so I was always kind of suspicious that they would do that. So I figured, well, let's just kind of wait and see if this Foxfly thing's for real. And now I just have—I have no connectivity except for my cell phone. Trying to fire up, you know, just trying to fire up the old. Uh, 
DSL network and all that kind of crap again here. I forgot how to even use it, where you know wireless in the house. Yeah, and it's not working very well because uh, all I have is wireless and it just isn't working. So when my landline doesn't work in here. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out the um, these uh, hangouts because it, it's strange. Um, in fact, I'm recording this whole session. Probably we'll do a blog afterwards, ex explaining my my doubts. Hopefully, someone can clarify what's going on at my end. But I created a, an event within the community. Right. When I tried to initiate, I think we've had this conversation before, but I, um, I tried to initiate the uh, hangout within the uh, community, and it gives you less options. It doesn't give you the option to broadcast live, which is what I wanted. It just simply goes directly to the hangout. So, which is fine if you're recording it from a third-party application, you know, and you've got that recording. Um, but what I wanted, is essentially, is to broadcast live for one and also to automatically have the recording uploaded to YouTube. And it looks like Kirsten is finally here. Great. Kirsten, <laughs> you made it. Yes, I made it. <laughs> Hello, Kirsten. Yeah, I was just explaining to Rob, I'm still trying to figure out how to initiate these Hangouts. It's very strange. Maybe you you can help us with this. But I've tried to, what I tried to do initially was to initiate the Hangout within the community, within the Till Thursday community. And in doing so, it gives me less options. It doesn't give me the option to mm -hmm. broadcast live, which then also doesn't give me the option to have the recording automatically uploaded to YouTube, which is what ideally what I would like uh, to do. So what I did was I opened up the when I opened up the Hangout when I realized I didn't have those options, and nobody was uh, joining. I closed the uh, the Hangout and went to the normal Google Plus page and opened up just an, an, a, a Hangout as I normally would outside the, the community, which then it gives me different options. So I, I chose to invite everyone in the community, in the Till Thursday community, I chose the option to broadcast live and I initiated the event. So when I did that, then I realized no one else could find the event. That's when I started receiving tweets from you uh, asking, well, where's the event? I can't get into the event. And so then I started to wonder, well, if, where is that invite that I, you know, that I included when I chose to start the hangout outside the community? And the whole, this whole thing's kind of confusing to me. Um, and so after a while, after I realized you were still having issues trying to find the chat, then I closed that um, hangout, went back to my community, open, initiated the uh, hangout again through the community, and here we are. Now we're here. And I actually invited you uh, personally after I invited the, the whole community. So I was continually trying to in, uh, invite the community. And, and in your case, personally, I, I sent you uh, an invite directly uh, to you. So my question is, first of all, how did you finally get into the community? And do you, the second question is, do you have any idea what's, you know, what's going on or what's the best way to generate these hangouts in a way that we can broadcast live. First of all, we can initiate it through the community, but also have the option to broadcast live and have these recordings. Because essentially, you know, my idea is that I, I want all of these open discussions recorded. And 
Um, you know, so uh, that's that's my general question, I, and that's really to anyone. If anybody has any insights, um, and yeah, so what are your what are your thoughts? Do you have any idea what's going on with communities? <laughs> I can only say that, uh, yes, my thinking was uh, like this initially, the communities are new, you created this community as soon as uh, Google gave us the option, and um, I don't know, I think you chose public probably, or is it a private community? Um, so as I, there's a bit of some people talking difference whether you make it public or private, when you have public, it automatically appeals as peers for all well. Whereas with private communities, um, you well naturally as it's private, you you have different options, which might affect the broadcasting though. So what I did was. Um, joining the link you posted in the community thinking well it's a community event so everybody uh, is going to join well i then found myself alone so i thought hmm, something must be wrong Sorry. and <laughs> and yeah basically uh, ben just click on your picture then you are in the center if you click on your picture, not everybody that is talking is then coming in the um, in the center picture. You, uh, below in the bar, click on your picture, then you are uh, up in the center again. Yeah, so basically, yeah, so I then tweeted to you uh, using the hashtag and the first time, um, I guess, as I am in your circles and you are in my circles, I found that you were in the Hangout, but I could only watch the Hangout, so I couldn't join it. When you then sent me, like in the third attempt, you sent me the personal or private invite, uh, I was able to join. So, um, and I think, yeah, and I think public hangouts cannot be joined, something like this. Okay, so I'm going to ask a stupid question, um, and I'm looking now on my community's page. Um, what type of community, is this a public community? Uh, where do I indicate what type of community it is, whether it's private, public, or what are those options? To be honest, I haven't played a lot with communities yet. The only thing I found out coming back to the Hangouts, the public Hangout cannot be joined by anybody, uh, although it says public, but it's basically a safety measure by Google to to prevent um, everybody can join. Public only means for Google everybody everybody can watch the Hangout, but not everybody can join or participate in the Hangout, which is a little bit confusing with all the options. And about communities, I don't know, maybe some of the other participants today have um, yeah. experiences with communities. I haven't many yet, to be honest. Well, if you, and I'm looking again at my community, I show that there are, it says on the right hand side uh, of the, the wall there, it says 95 members and are those 95 members a part of the community that is, are they able to post and share uh, in the wall or do I need to, do I need to invite those people or do you know? I think the easiest would actually be to create a so-called till page and then um, what is it invite the members in the community something like this but we can we can talk via email to sort of give you the the step process is maybe not for 
for the hangout now uh, feasible to to clarify everything okay just for the record because what i'd like to do if possible and again we can talk about this later or i may blog um this in fact i'm recording this whole session uh through camtasia so um and we'll be posting and asking more questions but ideally what i would like is to set up a community where i can generate a, 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 a periodic hangouts that are open to the community but that also broadcast live and that also upload automatically to youtube that's my intention so i'm just going to throw that out there and probably maybe later on you know we can have a discussion on how if that's possible how that could can be set up and i'll do some homework later on but that's my that's my intention basically but at least you're at least you're here and i see george is here hello george you know i i uh george you've been talking about uh his uh ben sounds like he's on helium but uh, his voice is fine with me. Uh, it, uh, Ben's chatting off on the right. Yeah, and I'm not using a headset at the moment, so hopefully that won't cause a problem. And it hasn't caused a problem in the past, but we'll see how it goes. If there is a, an echo problem, I may have to try to track down some head, headphones. It, as a matter of fact, it it did get better, and I'm willing to bet that that was due to um, your um, environment that you're talking in. So it does, you'll, you'll find it interesting when you listen to the recording. You do sound higher pitched and munchkin-like. Okay, I'll try to speak in a lower voice then, George. <laughs> all right. <laughs> he sounds that way all the time. It's not... That's my normal voice. Take it or leave it. <laughs> you know, uh, the answer to your question, I know that it can be done. I don't know how to do what you're trying to talk about. But it, there was another uh, event that I joined yesterday. It was actually from Australia. And they did the event thing. And they were doing the live broadcast. And it was, you know, live broadcast on the air. And uh, it was through joining an event, so I know it can be done. I just don't know. I don't know the answer to your question, obviously. Yeah. 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 I know that Google, the Hangouts, have the option of having uh, the the images pan over to whomever's t talking at that particular time. So, for example, right now I have Kirsten up. Uh, even though that I'm speaking, I'm looking at Kirsten on, on the big screen. So is there, how do you toggle back and forth? I know if you want to click on, if you click on, on an image, you can see that person. But how do you go back to have the automatic panning function where whomever is speaking, uh, that person's image appears? Well, you're, you're, on, you're on the center stage for me. Yeah, for me, it's changing all the time. I think it's uh, the problem is your connection, Ben, that it's not um, changing uh, as quickly that you have the uh, voice change quicker than the picture change because it's okay for me. Okay, because it was panning over it until I decided to, to, to click on an image. It was working on my end just fine. You have to click on the same image again, click on the same, and then it will pan back and forth. Yeah, you have selected someone. You're so smart, Rob. Thank you. That took care of it. <laughs> I knew it was something easy. All right. Well, thanks, uh, everybody, for, for being here. I, the, the intention here really is to kind of give a broad overview of, of the community, the reasoning why I set up this community, um, and uh, really hopefully to, to have an opportunity to have periodic hangouts uh, so uh, English language uh, educators basically anyone interested in teaching English to students of other languages have have an opportunity to interact um, I've noticed that there are uh, a lot of the communities are coming are emerging quite quickly a lot of them about the same topics and and uh, I've kind of had a few questions and wanted to get some of your feedback
um, first about what your thoughts are with regard to communities, the Google Plus communities, um, what your initial reactions are, um, if you think they're uh, kind of, or if you think that this is a better way of generating discussions uh, versus pages, for example. Um, I don't know, what are your initial reactions uh, before I go into my long spiel about uh, the community and the reasoning why I set this up, what are your initial reaction to these uh, Google communities? So George, I don't know if we can start with you. Have you worked much with the communities and Google Plus? This is George. No, I have, I have dropped out of that loop trying to keep up with so many things. So, I really don't have much to offer. Because that's one thing that I noticed that there are a lot of hangout. I'm sorry, a lot of communities that are basically, uh, you know, directed towards similar topics, right? So, I guess it's a matter of joining with those whom you either know from prior experience or from prior online experiences or, or just joining a lot of them and seeing which ones have more interaction I don't know um, Kirsten what do you what are your thoughts How, have, have you been joining a lot of communities or are you waiting kind of to see which communities interact or what's your thoughts um, I think communities are probably uh, an exciting opportunity. Um, I have to see if uh, I give Google Plus another chance, basically, because I'm really busy on Twitter and Facebook already and get a lot of invites and follows on Pinterest, and I basically have to make the decision whether that's worth investing more time and, um, again, building up a new following and interactions and so on, because in the end, it's the same with all those social media profiles. You have to be active and you cannot like occasionally post something and then hope uh, that people it's well received by people and so basically uh, Google Plus as a social network has not um, sort of developed uh, in the same speed like Facebook and Twitter for me and I have to see if it's worth my time because it's very time consuming and I just have to see how to integrate this in a meaningful way um, in general. Uh, but I think, as it looks to me from not having dealt with communities a lot, but uh, it's potentially very interesting. Yeah, um, Rob and I have had a, an opportunity to kind of experiment with uh, Google Plus Hangouts through our mobile devices. And I, I found that interesting this week. Uh, for me, for the first time, was able to generate a, a Hangout with my uh, Android tablet and with, I believe, Rob's telephone, where we were able to use both uh, the front-facing camera and, the, and the, the external camera to basically have a Google Plus live experience and be able to, uh, you know, walk around. I saw his backyard, and and we were able to. Um, you know, be a little bit more mobile uh, as we, I guess, as we, we couldn't be if we were doing it sitting in front of a computer. But I certainly see a lot of opportunities there with the Hangouts and, and mobile devices. And it seems like uh, Google's moving more towards the, the mobile, uh, you know, device uh, arena. And um, I don't know, I think for, in my case, getting some of my students into certain language exchanges I think uh, these types of opportunities um, you know are, are starting to become more available like, like my alarm excellent are you on your uh, telephone now Rob or are you on your computer uh, no I switched over I could have uh, continued but uh, I did get home connectivity uh, I was mentioning earlier that Verizon did an up, update on the Android system from uh, Jelly Bean 4.0. I use Fox 5. Well, first of all, I guess I should uh, uh, I should say I love mobility, 
you know? And, and so I think of myself as a wannabe Socrates with a cell phone. And uh, the use case would be, for instance, I've worked with Marina from, um, uh, yeah, she's from uh, Eastern Europe and uh, teaches English at a university there. But and has done that for a long time. Now I'm not a, I'm not a professional at this. I'm a, a business person that happens to teach business classes to visiting international students. Um, but the use case for going mobile would be, you know, as I walk to my house, I I could be connected through Google through the uh, these Hangouts with Marina in her classroom. Uh, in uh, oh, I almost have it. It's not. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot where it's at. Um, so anyway, I could go to the grocery store and have a conversation with her classroom. I could go to the bank. I could go to my backyard and talk about olive trees. You know, to carry on a conversation, and uh, you know, and then do a lot of listening and a lot of interactive real time right now types of things, but I'm not limited to you looking at my face uh, in the conversation. So that's why I'm excited about the mobility types of things. And, you know, I've, I've tried out with my iPad, it's worked, uh, worked well, you know, and you can do some things, and my uh, cell phone. So having that mobility, you know, it's it, to me it's kind of uh, does away with some of the issues that they have with, uh, you know, I don't know how you feel about this, but... Uh, you know, the whole military, uh, industrialized education system uh, that some say are, you know, we put you into a little box, you're in first grade, second grade, third grade, you know, and then we don't allow the adaptive types of models that allow certain people to, you know, move forward. It's like you have to, no, you're just in first grade, so you have to take this, or standardized tests, or, you know, those things. But some people might more engaged with something and might move ahead. It's very tough to teach to the average, I, I would think, you know, the, the average, because that means half the kids would like to go further on and half the kids would aren't, aren't really there. So it seems to be kind of a trendy thing, and I, I think that the mobile options of these Hangouts are great. My use applications for this, in fact, I'm going to do this with an upcoming uh, online class. I use Moodle at a university. And, um, and I'm going to teach global logistics. I don't know who's going to be in the classroom. I'm going to assume that uh, they are going to register international students. But I'd like to make it highly engaging. So I'll set up a private, uh, you know, for just for that course, I'll set up a uh, private uh, community. And I'll have those students join the community. And what it would give them there is the ability to join in mobily. They don't have to be in a classroom. They can be any time, any place. Uh, we have uh, real-time video options, of course. You know, re real-time, uh, we can have discussions. They could be, uh, if I was teaching, I also teach new product development. You know, and, and when you develop new products, they say get into the use code, get, or get the, the use situation. Don't do it from a, don't do it from a classroom. You know, how are you going to design a human-centered uh, type of thing from a classroom? So all this mobility gets me excited. And I've been talking way too long, sorry. No, I, I completely agree. And I, I, I'm looking at George's comments here about the tendency for those under 25 being uh, what he says uh, hardwired for mobile devices. And I see that here in Mexico, um, certainly everyone has a cell phone. Most of them have laptops. Mo I would say the majority of them have, um, well, maybe not even the majority, less than the majority, would have their own personal connection. So maybe they have a, a service or a, a modem uh, where they have access uh, to the Internet. But the, I think the, the problem that we're still facing here in Mexico is not so much that whether there's a, a lack of mobile devices. That's not the case. The problem is is the connectivity, whether the, the students have a connection or not. And you know, there's a big difference between having a mobile device with access to the internet and a mobile device that, uh, that does not have access to the internet. It's it's a, as far as from an educational standpoint. So um, for us, 
I think we're still a little bit behind the curve in terms of uh, connectivity, not so much having a mo mobile device. And I see we're, we're slowly you know, moving towards having more of our students being connected. And I think once they become connected, more opportunities uh, in the classroom uh, as well as outside of the classroom, as you allude to, Rob, um, I think more learning opportunities or better opportunities will emerge. Um, but for us here in Mexico, we still have this issue. I feel that uh, you know connectivity is still a problem. Um, one example, at the university where I teach, we have internet available, we have Wi-Fi available to the students, but the campus, it doesn't reach the entire campus. So depending on which building you happen to be in, you may or may not have access to, to the internet. So, uh, you know, if you're within range and you have a signal, great, you know, you, you have these additional opportunities. But if you happen to be in a building that's out of reach, uh, you're out of luck, basically. You, you have a mobile device, but you don't, you don't have uh, a connection. So um, I think that though the younger generation may be uh, more, uh, what, hardwired for mobile devices, as George puts it, um, I think uh, as educators, I think there's still a lot of room for learning how to best use these technologies and these mobile technologies to create these more authentic uh, learning uh, experiences. And uh, I think that's I think that's part of my hopes out of creating this community is getting the dialogue started and having more educators uh, enter into these conversations, whether they're through Hangouts or through the, the community itself, through just posting ideas and sharing websites. Um, but, but yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's uh, something that we here in Mexico uh, face. Um, Kristen, in your uh, you're in France, right? Um, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I am in France. So um, I would say I regularly use and like Google Hangouts um, when I teach workshops. So to other professionals, uh, and I would include uh, teachers. What I see students, and I have to precise that I don't teach languages in a formal like classroom setting, but what I see them use is basically uh, text messages, uh, chat applications, WhatsApp, Facebook chat, uh, and so on. And I see them rarely connect um, via voice or even video chat um, because text message seems to be um, even in a language learning or exchange setting seems to be more I don't know uh, quicker faster something for them um, and what I would say is when I see them connect um, in a different setting they use Skype but nobody or almost nobody in that age group seems to be on uh, Google Plus and therefore using Hangouts. So I don't know if this is just something like we are on this social network and we like uh, Google Hangouts and I think yeah the, the technology is definitely solid. I have used both Skype and Hangouts from my mobile phone as well without having big issues there. Um, so I don't know if the age group we are talking about, unless we, we, we put them in a classroom and we say we now have a Google Hangout or the teacher is coming via Hangout that they accept it. I don't know if this is their natural like behavior. I rarely see that in informal learning at least to be honest. Yeah, and I would agree with you. I, it's not a natural, uh, natural thing here either in Mexico. Uh, I see Dixie just joined. Uh, hello, Dixie. Dixie and I have had the pleasure of meeting uh, several times through conferences here in Mexico. I don't know if you have a microphone, Dixie, but uh, feel free to uh, chime in whenever you'd like. Um, but and uh, but yeah, and I agree, Kirsten. In Mexico, we. It's a, we really, as educators, have to initiate 
this the use of technology to create these learning experiences and um, as I mentioned before with having a lack of connectivity in general among students once they have this uh, level of, of connectivity uh, I'm, I'm wondering what the role of Twitter for example might be you know I mean I see a lot of opportunities as as we do with hashtag sharing information using Twitter which now seems fairly natural for those who have had uh, more experience using Twitter I'm wondering how the students would take on to using Twitter in the same way so whereas you know the there would be more communication between the students and the, and the, the teacher versus Twitter um, I don't know I mean it's hard to say or just kind of, this would it's a hypothetical situation at the at, at this time at least from my perspective uh, teaching in Mexico because of, again because of the connectivity issue um, but uh, but yeah and Dixie I don't know I see you don't have a microphone um, I don't know if you've had the same situation Dixie if, as far as uh, your students um, if they have a lot of mobile devices and whether or not connectivity is a problem um, and that's what we're addressing uh, at this time as far as uh, how connected students are and perhaps what learning uh, opportunities might exist if uh, they they would be connected so um, one of the reasons why I set up this community I'll go ahead and kind of lead into very briefly uh, explain kind of my intention uh, or reasoning behind setting up uh, this hangout and I'm gonna switch now to screen share just to uh, just so you can see a little bit about what I'm talking about so hopefully this will work so let me know if you can see my screen yes great um, first of all I'd like to invite everyone uh, this the session is being recorded so if you're watching this recording later uh, I'd like to invite everyone to uh, join and, and uh, put a place marker where they're located. Uh, Rob was kind enough to set up this, uh, this community map. And uh, you can see we've added our pen, so uh, feel free to add your pen to the map. But it's, it's always nice to know where people are from. Uh, and it also helps to kind of see what time zones we're working uh, with so we can better schedule uh, periodic uh, hangouts in a way that uh, most uh, most of us can participate ideally you know we uh, the idea is to have as many people pr participate as possible obviously with hangouts only 10 people at a time can participate but um, the idea is uh, you know that we get as, uh, as much participation as possible you know you know uh, I it if, uh, if you go to that map, what I, this is what I would suggest. I've had some uh, further thoughts, and this is how, my, how I'm going to use it. Okay, so you have a link to that, but I would put that on the community page down at the bottom, like, where are you from? You know, as another category, so that you just go to that. Because otherwise, it's in the feed stream, and the new people that come on, you know, it's just not on their mind. You know? Yeah, actually, what I did, uh, Rob, was I included it in the description. I don't know if you've noticed, if you scroll down, if you look at the main... Uh, page. Take your, take your I, back there. I did uh, include this link if you can see it here. So again, uh, I invite everyone to oh, go okay. to this map and uh, add your your place marker wherever you're located, uh, if you wish. You know, it's I it's always interesting to see where everybody's from, and I think that's one of the the great things yeah. about these technologies is we can meet people from around the world. So. Yeah, and in that other ed tech, I think there's about, I don't know, 15 or 20 people that have signed up for that one now and at least put the place marker on there. Only one person messed it up, which is pretty pretty cool. Well, and, and I just had to correct it because what they did was went into edit mode and changed the name of the map and uh, instead of uh, just putting a bookmark on there. But, uh, you know, and then uh, while, while we're at it here, we, if you go back to the map, could I do a quick how-to? I started to do a, a screencast-o-matic, but uh, if you go back to the how-to, or the, uh, if you go back to the map, all you do is you go up into the top and, and you put in the location, 
uh, why don't you do a fictitious one right now and say you're in uh, France, in Paris, France. Uh, you know, you do the search, the Google search, put in Paris, France. Okay, and then do the search. Okay, and then click on the little A. And if you're in Camtasia, maybe you can cut this portion and then this will be the demo. Easier to and then you then you say save. Yeah, I won't I won't do that now, but um at this Oh okay, point, I thought you were saved right now. Well I I was I'm about to, but I, I I'll wait. I won't save it. But once you save it, then you you'll have a marker, a place marker like you know, it should be blue, I think, by default. And then you can move it around to wherever you'd like to put it and then Okay. Let me go back and show you mine. Kind of get a slow refresh here. Um, just take a look. If anyone has issues trying to add their place marker, yeah, just post a link. Or I'm sure somebody will help you out. Um, okay, so going back here to the community, what I've done is I've created a couple of categories, several categories, in fact. And um, when you do post, uh, you're able to, you know, select the different categories. So uh, just to keep that in mind when you're sharing, um, you know, if you want to uh, select one that's pertaining to one of the particular categories, feel free to do that. Uh, one question I did have was, is, is it possible for other members to create, um, create events and create hangouts within this community? Does anyone know? I did. Remember? Didn't I create the first one say, let's try it? Or maybe that wasn't in this community, but I've done it in other communities. But So let me go to this one. I'll just do it right now. So I'll go to these, uh, this community. OK, and then it, it shows the Hangout. And then I can view all the events. And then I can come down to the bottom left, and I can go to Events. And I can say, Create an Event. And I'm going to do this. Oh, you know what? I should be screen sharing, sorry. Let me let me let me do that. Uh, this one, I think. Yeah. Okay, and then let me back up because I was talking rapidly and and uh, demonstrate. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So down at the bottom, it shows uh, events on your your thing, and then uh, there's the current hangout. I could join that one, but I'm already in there. But I could create an event. And I could call it test, and then um, and then this would invite all of the, the teachers. I don't want to do that right now, but if I just leave, that's the default, right? All the till uh, community members. So I'm going to erase this, and I'm just going to invite you, Ben, uh, Benjamin. I'm just going to invite you to this one as the example. Okay, before you invite, Rob, can you click down the event? Can you click the down arrow next to event options? I just want to see if you can initiate. You don't have to do it. You don't have to actually initiate it. Go down to advanced. Uh, advanced. Okay, so you can generate a hangout. So that's what I wanted to know. Each it's member it's it's in, it's in the community yeah. is able to generate a hangout. So that's 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 good. That's what I was hoping. So, um, you know, that's another way, you know, that, you know, I don't have to be the only one initiating hangouts if others want to initiate their own hangouts. Um, yeah. In answer to your, your, your very first question, too, as I look at these advanced things, it says make this an event on air. That's live broadcast to YouTube. So maybe that was my mistake. I didn't select that option. Because I did select Google Hangout when I set up the event, but I, I don't think I selected that option. So Yeah, it does it does say well what here, I'm gonna just I'm creating this new event. Uh, and uh, and I could it oh this would be for seven o'clock tonight. Sorry, I didn't look at the time. So I've created this new event as a test. 
and it's just you and I for right now. And uh, but you have the ability to to uh, invite others. Uh, here's you know, and and I think when we do this, it will be on the air uh, because that was the option I chose. Okay, that's good to know. Still, still kind of learning about how these communities work. Um, great. So, very briefly, uh, just to sum up. Um, my short discussion here because I, I have some other questions I want to ask everybody before we conclude and I don't want to go over time here I know everybody's busy um, but I just want to end by saying um, that this online community that I created in Google Plus is part of a Moodle site which the website is found here uh, and what I've created here is a lot of the all the courses that I teach here at the university uh, I also have, uh, I'm also posting a lot of information online. So I've created this Moodle and I've attempted to make it as open as possible. I know we tend to think Moodle is being a closed uh, environment, but uh, I've actually tried uh, my best to keep as much information op as open as possible. So even as guests, you can see most of uh, the information. Uh, you can see the blogs that I'm posting, uh, but basically I wanted to uh, create a space where my students had access to what we're covering face to face, and also hopefully, uh, you know, invite others to participate as well. So again, the 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 reasoning behind calling this website Teachers for Interactive Language Learning is really trying to create an interactive environment for my students, per thinking personally for, for me, but also uh, an interactive environment amongst uh, educators and teachers and trainers. Uh, and I use the, the, the word teachers loosely. I mean, it's basically anyone who has an, an interest in helping others learn an additional language. So uh, whether you're accredited or certified or just someone interested in uh, you know, m teaching professionally, uh, teaching and making money online. Uh, it's really open to anyone. Uh, I'll end by sharing this one website, which is some research that I'm working on now. I'm working on a proposal uh, for creating um, an online environment for, uh, for teachers, and I'm, I'm researching personal learning networks uh, for for educators, English language educators specifically, but uh, the most of the research will be open. So uh, even though I'll have certain participants who will be interacting in different spaces online, all of the information and interaction will be open. So my intention is to have the participants that I end up choosing to, um, for this study to interact. Not, not only amongst themselves, but hopefully uh, with, with others who perhaps aren't participants of the, uh, of the study, but choose to interact in this space. So um, I'll probably choose another time to go into it, uh, but if you are interested, this is the, uh, the link, and I'll post it in the chat. Uh, feel free to check, take a look at it. I'm trying to explain and uh, upload as much information as possible so you can get an understanding of uh, what the research is about, but uh, I encourage and invite anyone who's interested to check, take a look at it and participate uh, if they choose to. Uh, if you want to pass it along to your colleagues, uh, feel free to do so. Um, but I wanted to share that with you uh, here uh, getting, getting started. Great, great minds must think alike. Yeah, I've also set up a place called Moodle. And uh, with the same intent, I'll accept that, uh, you know, so I'll set up the classes, but then I'll invite in other people, uh, you know, to either participate, take the, class, take the courses. So it's that whole uh, open source, uh, you know, and, and I think that, uh, uh, you know, rather than, like you say, the close, that's, that's the, uh, I teach at University of California, Riverside. And, you know, having discussions with the Moodle coordinator, the only thing that Moodle's good for is registration. You know, it's there's so many other things that can be used. So my even on my my Moodle course that's going to be for them those registered students that pay so much money to get into the course. 
uh, even those students, the first link is let's go hang out. Let's uh, you know set up uh, for Google Plus. And the reason I chose Google Plus, although I've had uh, courses uh, where the students, like in a new product development, I had them set up a uh, a Facebook group, which is kind of okay, but it lacks the you know when you're teaching anything online. I guess what I've learned is be present. You know you have to be there. And uh, so I see, yeah, more than anything, that's the biggest, I, that's what I hear from people, is just the instructor's not there, you know, and, and Moodle in particular is very, uh, uh, you know, very asynchronous. It doesn't have to be, of course, you know, but for the most part it kind of is, or uh, you're not the wrong place in the wrong time. So uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. I don't know if you have time for this, but I'd like to give you the use case for the mobility because I see that Dixie wrote in here. She doesn't have a mic on, but lots of mobile devices, and can they connect and would they? So just by a quick demonstration with the topic of learning uh, languages, and, and I'd like to leave this room and then rejoin it from my cell phone and have you walk with me and uh, and uh, just see how this works. Well, let, you know, let, let me pretend I am Socrates. Okay, so I'm going to uh, hang up from here and I'll be right back. While we wait for Rob, uh, Kirsten, is there anything uh, that you're currently working on that you want to promote? Uh, any uh, reflections from this year or anything that, uh, that's, that you have in the, in the works that you can share? Um not not really something to plug so um yeah if you want to go on fairlanguages.com it's my like newest site where we speak about um well usually targeting the the learner so end user about um, new finding studies in language learning, how to learn a language. Um, so it's really a how-to site for, for teachers and language learners. But uh, otherwise, no, you know, it's a lot of company stuff, training and webcasts and so on. So I would say that's that. And occasionally, of course, there is a um, language-related uh, video on EduQuest uh, as well. And um, I just wanted to hear from you guys today, so I didn't come to like pluck heavily. <laughs> so um, yeah. Well, I think you know, and one of the reasons before we get to Rob uh, and see his neighborhood, uh, you know, one of the things and the reasons why I I, I want to have these periodic hangouts really is to give everyone the opportunity to push what they're interested in, if they're working on any projects, any research, any websites uh, that they're working on, that uh, they feel free uh, to, to plug it. Um, you know, this is uh, you know, about promoting uh, ourselves as well, so um, I, I, I encourage everyone to do that. And Kirsten, I, I, I really like the website um, Fair Languages. I, I think, I don't know how you feel about how it's, it's, it's coming along, but um, uh, it's I I find it to be a great website and am enjoying a lot of the uh, the posts and information that's been uh, uploaded there. So hopefully that that uh, continues and grows and. Um... Yeah, yeah, I think so. So there has been in. I mean, we have been doing this, and I say we, so it's basically a collaboration of uh, different teachers, uh, tutors in the language learning space. So it's not just just me. There are lots of people contributing, and uh, well, if somebody in uh, our hangout is interested, um, of course, I'd be happy to to have a talk, and maybe you want to share an article or, or write a post. So uh, I think in this informal setting of uh, language learning, lifelong learning, there's a real interest from both uh, teachers and, and learners how to or uh, to, to stay on top, to be informed of, on the one hand, research, on the other hand, practical tips on yeah, how to target this, go uh, this goal of, of learning a new language, actually. So uh, it's been picked up really, really nicely. Um, the numbers are good and, um, well, everything is free. So um, yeah, there's no strings attached to <laughs> to the site. 
Great, and I recommend everyone uh, checking out uh, Fair Languages. And Dixie, if there's anything that you'd like to share, any uh, websites or any information about conferences coming up, feel free to include those in the links. Uh, this is being recorded, and I am using Camtasia, so everything in the chat will be included in the video. That's one of the unfortunate uh, things that I've found when broadcasting live and those recordings are uploaded to YouTube is that the group chat, to my understanding, is not included in the recording. So uh, you, 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 you lose the, the chat when you get the YouTube recording. But in this case, we're recording through uh, Camtasia, so feel free to share any links I'll uh, plug anything you want. Uh, this is what it's all about as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Self-promoting and uh, sharing what you're interested in, inviting others to get into uh, different areas and websites that, uh, that you feel strongly about. So uh, please share uh, whatever you'd like. Looks like Rob is now walking around his neighborhood. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly, very quickly, just give this a uh, little demonstration of how I think. Because, well, you guys are educators, but this is how, this is, you know, a lot of times I think you really learn when you're in the environment. Uh, you know, the case, the, the example is my son. Took, he's, he's taken seven years of Spanish and he could only speak Spanish when he had too much to drink. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just got back from South America for six months. And this is how you learn. You walk into a Spanish neighborhood. And you speak, or you don't eat, you know. Uh, and I, I've seen, you know, many people that teach courses. They they only speak English to teach uh, non-English uh, or for English learners. You know, they just speak in English. Um, but the other uses would be, let's say, for uh, you know, you could have your class and say, "What's it like to live in?" I want to speak with a native English speaker. Well, what's that? Ask me a question. That's called a tree. You know, and that's an olive tree, and this is what a house looks like. And would you like to learn how to change a tire on a truck? Uh, that's kind of the wandering around here. But the other use code, or you know, the use place, um, the mobile use place could be: I'm at UPS. I'm walking through. This is the conveyor at UPS. I'm at the airport. I'm performing a job. I drive a forklift. I'm on the forklift. Watch. I push this little toggle thing here. Uh, you know, uh, and it makes the, the forks go up and down. Do you have any questions? You know, and so that would be how, uh, you know, and, and there'd be all, all different types of topics, of course. So Socrates, as he wanders around, and of of course, all these students could be any place. If you do have good connectivity, that's the key point. Uh, if there, as long as there is connectivity, uh, you can engage in real-time conversations um, without having to be in the same space, without having to be in a classroom, without having to be uh, part of an institution, without you know, without the all those different types of things. You can have a conversation and learn together. So, uh, question, Rob. Yeah. Can you can you turn uh, your camera uh, to make it uh, landscape? Make it oh, turn it off to the side just to I, see how it I looks. It's freezing out here. I thought you wanted. Let's see. Let me let me let me see if it goes landscape. You know, just in my humble opinion, it looks better like that, how you have it now. Okay. You get kind of a wider view. But um, this is something, and Rob and I have had this conversation, and I'm going to go ahead and throw out a quick uh, invite. Next semester, I'm teaching an English culture class. And the objective of the course really is to observe and learn about different cultures from English-speaking countries. So if anyone's interested in... Uh, either doing a group-to-group -group or any type of exchange. Um, it doesn't even have to be with other students. It can be with educators or whomever. Um, I'm, I'm looking for anyone who might be interested in sharing a few uh, online sessions where my students can uh, get exposed to different cultures from Eng English-speaking countries. So I'm just going to throw that out there. And uh, if anyone uh, is interested, feel free to contact me uh, through this community. And uh, 
yeah, so I want to throw that out there and uh, great. We could we could see how people drink. Uh, this is whiskey. This is you know, we could we, you know we could go to the bar. We could go to the library. We could go to the park. Uh, so just uh, we could go to the airport. We go to the bank, the grocery store. You tell me where you want me to be, and I'll expose them to to culture. You know, we could say, oh, look at how rude people are here. <laughs> you know, this is a rude person. Uh, this is a person who doesn't like you. You know, or whatever portions of culture you might want to do. If you give me a little agenda, I think that might work. Yeah, as long as we keep it uh, G-rated, I okay. think we'll, we should be in good shape. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for that uh, demonstration. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. And uh, I, I guess we're looking at your thumb at this point. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch. Are we done now? Oh, all right. Yeah, we've been yeah. up. Uh, Okay, it looks like we're at about an hour, and I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, I uh, I had some other things that I wanted to, to address, but uh, maybe next time we can include those. I, I particularly have, uh, I'm in, interested in uh, these Twitter chats, and I did a, a short blog on kind of a discourse analysis of a current uh, ELT chat, uh, a Twitter chat. And maybe we can talk about that in a later date and get some of your ideas and feedback. But uh, I think we can go ahead and conclude here. And uh, I don't know if there are any final comments from anyone. I have one question. I have a question, one final question. Uh, how do people learn? Do you learn, uh, do you learn a language, let's say? Do you learn a language by reading it and by writing it? Or do you learn it by speaking it? Maybe that can be the essential question uh, in our next chat. How do people learn? Yeah. Okay. You know, you guys don't have a good answer for that. Like, <laughs> yeah, they learn by. Yeah. Answer that question in one sentence. They learn by. I just think of little kids. Little kids learn languages, but they don't know how to read nor write, and those are the ones where the languages seem to stick. It's like they look and people talk to them. You know? so, yeah, it's the whole issue of learning a, a, a first language and learning an additional language. And yeah. But yeah, okay, well, listen, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and conclude. Any final comments, Kirsten? Um, looking forward to our next chat. And um, yeah, I think uh, it was good that we sort of uh fixed or did the uh, administrative and organizational things and um can then really dive into our topics next time how do you all feel about setting up topics concrete topics beforehand or or versus more of an open discussion with bringing up ideas mm -hmm. as they come up what just a quick just to, before we conclude, what are your what are your preferences? Do you think we should have set uh, topics beforehand, or do you think we, there's enough stuff to talk about where we can open up a, a discussion and and run with it uh, each, you know, either a week or each, or every other week? Yeah, I would agree with Dixie. I also like the idea of having something concrete and uh, everybody can then um, decide on how relevant it's uh, in his or her uh, teaching environment and then uh, join or um, well bring ideas and maybe work on something. Um, now you have to be very spontaneous and I doubt that everybody is sort of so brilliant, uh, including me having uh, the perfect answer. So if questions can come up, um, it would be good during the week or um, like 15 days prior to, to meeting on working on some stuff and preparing some ideas and engage in some discussions already. Like yeah, should maybe make a twit poll or something like this. Great. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the design group of uh, IDO has a pretty good flat platform, and I think of all this as, as design and innovation. I think if the, que if the big question were posed as part of the event, 
Like, like what do you think if uh, people, people who work within this community? So basically similar as the ELT chat does where they, they post uh, a poll and then based on the responses and, and, set up a, a... And a lot of times what people do is they, they, well, this is inspiring. They might point to something, you know, another web page or something like that. Uh, this is inspiring, but it's really uh, not, to, uh, it doesn't get down to, but of all the inspiring things, this is what I really think. You know, I've sorted through everything, and this is what I really think. So I, th I, I, I like that uh, particular uh, platform because it, it takes divergent thinking and then turns it into convergent thinking about whatever the topic may be, language or internet or Twitter, or whatever it might be. Great. OK, all, all good stuff. Thanks, everyone, for uh, sticking around. And uh, we'll be uh, seeing each other in the community. I'll be posting information. And, um, and I look forward to our, our next chat. So thanks, everyone. And uh, have a have, have a great day, day everyone. Evening, Thanks. Wherever you are. Bye. Bye. All right. Take care. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Adiós. Gracias. Hasta luego. Nos vemos, Dixie. That's all. Spanish, I got. Adiós. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Gracias.